So for a long time now, I've had this jewellery concept. Basically, I take inspiration from the Royal Cup, which you can see in the British Museum in London in the UK. My idea is to take the Royal Cup concept and then sort of develop it a bit further using plating and, and trying lots of different colours and, and all sorts. I, I want to experiment with it. The only problem with this is that I have exactly no idea what I'm doing. I've tried it once so far and it just went terribly. Then I tried electroplating and that also went completely unsuccessfully. So what I'm going to do now is my tried and tested method of just trying it again and hoping this time it sort of just goes better. Yes, tried and tested. I never said it passed. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is get the sodium carbonate prepared again. I can't remember why I needed sodium carbonate, I just remember it was important. The way that I made sodium carbonate last time was by getting bicarbonate of soda and cooking it in an oven for an hour at a temperature which I've forgotten. Now I left this sodium carbonate in a Tupperware box for the last couple of months and I have no idea what happens to sodium carbonate if you leave it in a Tupperware box for a couple of months. For all I know it could be de -was named by something getting right in its what's it. I have no idea. So what I'm going to do is chuck it back in an oven for a bit and hope that whatever stuff has happened to it is hopefully unhappened to it by it being put in the oven. Let's go. So another thing I've done is put the copper back in some vinegar to clean it again. What's fun about this this time is that as I will now be using hydrogen peroxide, apparently mixing hydrogen peroxide and vinegar produces all sorts of horrifying chemicals that are bad for lungs and all sorts. So I do need to make sure I've dried it properly this time or this will just be awful. Awful. Right, now that the stuff has hopefully been re thingamied I can get on with whatever it is I'm supposed to be doing, I can't remember. So if you haven't seen the last video, it would make more sense if you watch it because it gives some explanation even if it doesn't make any... Uh, this, I will get this to focus on, there we go. This is a copper engraving I did, uh, you know, a first attempt at. Um, if only it were my first attempt. But my plan for this is that I want to then plate silver onto this and then I want to try and do some other things to it in later videos. But today I want to see if I can figure out how to electroplate this. The plan of attack with this is that now that this is sort of clean, I will cover it with some electroplating tape that I sort of found online and then cut bits out. The hope is that I can plate silver onto those bare areas without touching all of the bits that are covered in the tape. And then I will have plating happen. It sounds it sounds so self-explanatory, doesn't it? You'd have thought it would you'd have thought it would make sense to try. You'd have thought it would be easy, wouldn't you? Easy. And if you're trying to figure out what this engraving is even of, which I don't think I'm going to be able to show you clearly because my camera's refusing to focus on it, but it's my logo, just like on my t-shirt, now available from a shop on or accessible via my website. If that shop does now exist, then I'm Pretty sure I'll put a link to it there so that you can buy merch like mugs or an apron with my motto. Is it my motto? Anyway, the next stage is to tape this up so that some bits are exposed, which I will then plate with silver. That is how this will go. We all know that's how this is going to work. How could it not? Last time I did all of the cutting out, it seemed reasonably coherent where I'd got the cuts, but this time I think I've just sort of missed, and so it's now got random bits that will hopefully be silver. Oh well. Uh, this is a bit of a test run, so it's okay. So we've got the jar. We've got hydrogen peroxide, which in this case would be used for oxygenating ponds. We have the, the, the stuff now. We have this jar. I then also left all of the electroplating electronics over here. Broken it. I may have just broken it. Okay, we've got it working now. Can you see the orange LED? Can you see it? It's working. It should be yellow, but I don't care. So, pour out some hydrogen peroxide. And then, apparently, you do a few tablespoons of sodium carbonate to get the pH to 11. But I don't have a pH sensor, so we're just going to chuck it in there. Awful things happen. What does it look like? A bit of bubbling. Do I stir it? Will that do awful things to this? Oh, you're about to run out of batteries again, aren't you? Right, okay. So with all that set up, I'm pretty sure I put the silver on the red. That's how I did it last time. And, and the copper on the black. The tutorial I found says that the silver should fizz lots, which it, it does. Okay, I'm going to open a window. So if I then put the copper in, that is exciting. I'm going to have to add a bit more than the uh, hydrogen peroxide. It, uh, I think I leave it like that for a bit. 
catch is, because I've also been doing a cooking video in the other room, I've been trying to get the draft to go that way the whole time. But now I get to choose, do I have the draft going, drawing in all of the smoke that will set off the fire alarm, or drawing in all of the weird chemicals that might kill me? It's all right, we can adapt. I can't remember how long you said to leave it. It just... Whatever. Well, the tutorial that I'm following talked about a thick black coating forming on the silver and a purple forming on the copper, which I'm also not seeing. I'm not convinced that any of this is actually to do with the electrical reaction. Like, oh, no, it wouldn't be. So just figured out why it wasn't working. There's all of this fizzing and foaming and ooh, gas, which isn't actually having any impact on me, but it's still freaking me out. Um, but there didn't seem to be any electrolysis happening. And I've now found out, because I forgot to turn it on, all of that was chemical. Hopefully we will now start to see some electrolysis happening. So now I'll leave this for a few minutes, see what it's like when we come back. Great, and as viewers of the last episode of Mark's Weekly Nonsense will know, something good has just happened. Because I checked on these, and what do you know, it's got the black gunk on it, like the chap mentioned in the instruction thing. What he said to do is to file off this black gunk. Not seeing anything happening at all there. But that might be because all of the silver was just going into making the electrolyte. So what I'm trying to convince myself has just happened is the reason why the silver managed to go black like it should have done and the copper hasn't done anything yet is because you don't just put one metal and then the other metal in the fluid and leave it and then it all works, well, sort of. But first thing that needs to happen is that the, the, the fluid, in this case the hydrogen peroxide, needs to fill with that metal that you're then trying to deposit on the other one. So I'm hoping that the reason why there's no silver on the copper yet, it's just because it all had to get into the hydrogen peroxide before it could get onto the copper. So hopefully, things will start to happen here. That's what I'm hoping. So, you're just gonna have to deal with the fact that the sun is shining right down on the windowsill in a way that this camera is struggling with. But, I've left it a few days now, uh, and it's been bubbling away most of that time. What is all that white powder? What? I have no idea what's going on with all of this. Oh, maybe that's the white residue stuff that they were talking about. Anyway, I, I, it, it has been a while, so I'm gonna assume it's been long enough now. And let's just see what happens. It's, uh, no, I don't, hmm. I mean, it, it looks black on the copper, and I have no idea if I'm going to wipe that off and find... It looks just generically horrendous. Um, I suppose I'll take off the thing and thing me the thing me thing. Okay, let's see what this looks like then. Uh, I wonder if any of it will be recognisable. This tape hasn't... I mean, it hasn't completely failed, but it certainly hasn't completely worked either. Okay, so that's, um... Mm. Absolutely no idea what these things I am rubbing onto my hands are. But I'm gonna assume they're fine. At least some of them are hydrogen peroxide in some form or other. Or whatever was hydrogen peroxide. I just, I just... All I seem to do is blacken this copper. I do not understand. So, from what I can gather, looking again at the information on how to electroplate silver, this time, what I did should have worked but didn't for some reason. And so, I bought myself a pH tester in the hope that I can actually do something successfully, just generally, ever, at some point. That would be fun, I would enjoy that. So I'm gonna figure out how to use this. I'm gonna test the living pH out of the stuff. I, yeah, first need to calibrate this. I'm supposed to have distilled water. Yeah, I need to go buy some distilled water. The good news is that the local pharmacist had distilled water. Oh, is there a difference between deionized and distilled? Do, 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 cheeky Google should have read the thing when I was buying it. That's what I should have done. Bugger, they're not the same. You know what? It'll probably do. It might probably do. I don't know if it'll do. I've got it now, so I'm gonna have to use it anyway, aren't I? We're all right. The calibration sachet says deionized water. Oh, there, de de deionized. I'm safe. I'm safe because the ion, like the the acidity and alkali ness, are all based on OH minus and H plus ions, aren't they? GSEC chemistry, mate. We're fine. 
Okay, right. This has now been washed. So, now I need to calibrate it. It doesn't actually say which way around to put the batteries in, so let's see if this turns on or this isn't pops, I don't know. So, calibrating time. Chuck all of this, it only gives you one sachet of each calibrating thing at a time. So I have to nail this calibration. It always seems to be I do loads of research and find almost nothing, and then a little bit too late, I stumble across all of the incredible amount of information that's actually out there. Now that I've cleaned this off, you can see that, no, no, that's my face. No, look at the, look at the thing, it's a shiny thing. You can see that actually, there has been a little bit of silver been deposited on there, uh, and it just makes it a bit paler. And every so often there's little bits where it's got thick enough that it does actually just look like a bit of silver. But while this looks better than I had first expected, it definitely doesn't look how I wanted. So I think I'm gonna have to try this again. And I'm gonna have to be more careful about a few things, and I'm gonna have to make sure that I get some actual electroplating happening. Right, okay. So I've now got a fully calibrated what's name. So what I'm now gonna do is test the thing and see, it should be 11. And if it's not 11, then I add some of that stuff and I hope that makes it a bigger number or uh, yes, I don't know. I feel like I've already put more thought into this section than the person giving the instructions did. It just kind of worked for them. Yeah, see, it's only 10 and a half. I'm gonna get more hydrogen peroxide as well, I think. Well, I don't remember it fizzing that much. Well, fantastically, this has actually lowered the pH, which is definitely not what I was looking for. I'm gonna wait for it to finish fizzing. I'm also gonna open a window. I'm going to put this by a window. I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, it's finished fizzing, although it still bubbles a little bit. You know that? I think there is actually some weird other chemical that it's producing that is good and important for the process. I did read the thing, I just didn't understand most of it. Right. So we're just, we're just gonna set it up and see what happens again. I noticed that they did a lot of wiping it down every hour, as well as sanding off the silver. So I'm gonna make sure I do that. But that means taking off all of that, that tape, wiping it down and then reapplying all that tape every hour, which sounds tedious. But I want it to look good. And sometimes you actually have to put some work in as well. We're back. I think it's gone okay. It's generally looked all right. I mean, it's not so much of a surprise how it looks to me now, because I've been through a few stages of this. And we're getting to a point where it's sort of, focus, focus, focus. I don't know if you can see that. But it looks like it might be doing something. And where I've managed to convince the tape to stay, the silver hasn't plated. The tape doesn't like to stay though. The tape likes to join and be free with the bubbles. Sort of looks quite sad. But I'm now going to use a mixture of vinegar and salt to try and clean this off and see what color we end up with. I should clarify that I think this is a way of cleaning it safely. I don't really know. There's definitely a silvery tint to it, you know? Like there's a bit of silver going on there. One thing I sort of half-hearted, I wipe it down sort of every hour or so. But I think if I wanted to, as good a result as possible, I'd do this after putting it in for an hour and then I'd put it back in again and really take time with it. Right, okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash this down then I'm going to try the enameling on it again with the different colours. I don't know what happens if you heat up plated material enough so that you can enamel on it. So this is a bit of an experiment. Do I do it outside though? That's the big question. Do I do it outside in the in the garden with the friendly neighbours or do I do it inside and risk setting fire to everything? I do have a fire extinguisher though. This is the glass enamel. It, yeah. Right, now, with the exception of competence and self-respect, I think I have everything. <laughs> Except for the actual thing that I'm gonna plate. Right, that's, a, that's something I need for this. And then the next step is to cover it with all the bits of glass. We've got blues and greens and stuff. Can you see any of this? Probably not. Yeah, there you go. You can see a bit better. And if I'm sent into a world of flaming carnage, you being on this side means I'm not likely to trip on the tripod as I run for cover. So, an orange. Longer term viewers of this channel will know that I have tried this before. What happened uh, was that it looked horrendous. Like, really awful. Random splodge of terrible colours. 
I didn't put nearly enough of the enameling glass on any of it, and so it just sort of fizzled away. And this time, putting quite a lot more in there. The hope is it'll make better bits of colour. I'm also just doing it on a thicker bit of metal, so it's not all going to distort and look rubbish. I work on the nonsenses in such scatty random order now that I have no idea what I've told you or what I haven't. I'm not actually sure I've done the intro yet. I have a very strong suspicion that there's a right way of putting enamelling glass powder into these situations. I have a very strong suspicion that I'm not doing that right way, but that's my own fault for not googling it beforehand. So there it is, you can just about make out the various colours on it. And so hopefully now, I just torch it and everything goes well. So there is a fire extinguisher here, but I do need to check that I actually know how to use it. Yeah, the neighbours are friendly, and I don't know what to do about that, alright? So let's do this. I'm not even going to be sat down, I'm going to do it stood up. Did it work? I noticed that some of the glass powder went onto the table. We're gonna wait a bit and see what happens once it cools down. So, it's still really very warm, but it doesn't seem to have worked at all. What I think went wrong is that I'm blowing the heat down on top, and so I'm sort of blowing off a lot of the, the glass dust, seemingly scalding it when it needs to be sort of melted on there. So what I'm seriously umming and ahhing about now is whether I take the risk and try heating it from underneath like that. There's not really a lot of space to do it under there, because really what I need is one of those tripods you get in chemistry classrooms, so that it can hold it up and I can torch it from underneath. That might work. It is a little daunting though. I'll give it a, a single careful try. I've reapplied the colours. I have no idea if the goggles are helpful. I'm gonna give it one more go. No, that just isn't working, and I don't know why. Fine, I'll try it outside. While I'm getting ready, doing a little bit more research. So it turns out that to get these enamel glasses to melt, I need to get them to, I think it was six to 800 degrees C, something like that. It was either 67 or seven to eight, which is fine because this goes up to roughly 1,300, I think. The only risk with that is that Firstly, the copper has a melting temperature of about a thousand, certainly less than that was claiming to be able to get to. And the silver has a melting temperature of about 900. So there's actually a reasonably narrow window of temperatures where the glass melts, but nothing else does. I mean, relatively narrow. I mean, it's still 100 degrees or so. It does look like it's about to start raining as well. So I'll have to be quick. So I'm going to move this all down into the garden and I'm just gonna torch the thing and see what happens. So wish me luck. I'm still more scared of the neighbors than I am of the... And the neighbors are fine. They're lovely people. Been in the pub in the bag, I don't just they're just neighbours, the concept of neighbours. camera ran out of batteries, but I think it's actually melted. Wow, that's got to be hot. Now all I've got to do is figure out how to get it back inside without burning myself severely. Well, look at that. Oh, it's still cooling. Look at that. Ooh, hello. So it's now a couple of days later. And, as you can see, while it's definitely more successful than my last attempt, it's still got some way to go before it can be considered to be working well as a process. I think what happened is I managed to get it hot enough that I also melted the silver underneath, because you can see these silvery blotches underneath bits of the glass. I'm not 100% sure of that though. There's then of course the fact that while the glass is definitely melted, which is great, that's definitely progress, it's also managed to end up very bobbly and lumpy and things, which is definitely not the look I was going for. So yes, if for some reason you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe, check out my other weekly nonsenses on my channel and all of my music. Do well, have a day.